for all my small YouTube content creators out there, the people that only got 20 subs, 40 subs, 100, 400, 700, 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 subs. The creators that are struggling with no views or the creators that are struggling getting low views. The people that get views one week and then get no views the next week. The creators that are trying to find out what to talk about, what content to do, how to get monetized, how to be a partner, how to get your first YouTube paycheck, how to continue getting paychecks from here and beyond all limit. I love you beyond all limit. How to get more subscribers, how to make sure you're promoting and optimizing your videos properly, how to avoid copyright strikes and copyright claims while using copyrighted content, how to avoid reuse content so you can be a partner with YouTube. This is going to be the most comprehensive guide you have ever seen in your life for a small content creator to start making money with YouTube. I am going to tell you every part of my journey from having zero subscribers all the way to almost 10,000 subscribers. You're going to know every part of my pain, my struggles, my mistakes, the how I got depressed, how I got demoralized, everything, tips, tricks, what to do after you get monetized, what to do when you become a partner, how to get your first paycheck, you will know everything you need to know to not make the same mistakes that I made so you can be successful as a content creator on YouTube. I got you. And if I can do it, I know all y'all can do it because I'm slower than a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> first, I'm going to tell you my first YouTube paycheck. And my first YouTube paycheck was, drum roll, please, $188.26. We rich. We not rich. We rich. We broke. I know you're like, oh my God, you almost got 10,000 subs and you only made $188. When I tell you this journey that I've been on, you're going to be in the best situation to make way more money than me. The first thing I'm going to say is I have no social media. Yes, I have no social medias. You can't find me on Instagram. You can't find me on Twitter, TikTok. All, I only have YouTube. I don't have Facebook nothing i only have youtube as my only source of social media that means i got almost ten thousand subs not being able to share my content on all my social media platforms where if you're on facebook you got 100 friends 2000 friends whatever instagram i was never able to share my content on other social media platforms if i had my social medias where i had my thousands of friends on facebook and i was able to do my content and then share it to my Facebook. Do you know how much views I could have pulled in just by sharing to Facebook? I only share to my brothers in my group chat. I share my video and I send it to freaking like four or five of my brothers and I get those five likes to start off my videos and then my supporters. I, can't, I have no way to share my videos to nobody else but people in my phone. But I did have a Facebook in the beginning of my YouTube journey when I had zero subs and I made my first mistake. And my first mistake on YouTube was going in them Facebook community pages where they, I was in a, a whole bunch of video game pages, Call of Duty pages, 2K, NBA 2K pages, going sub for sub with other people. That is the worst mistake you can ever make trying to start your uh, channel off. What I mean by going sub for sub is you ask somebody else to sub to your channel and then they'll sub for yours. And then you thinking that y'all both sub to each other, that means y'all both can watch each other content. It does not work like that. People do not watch your content. That was a horrible mistake I had made trying to start off my YouTube channel. I gained 200 subscribers going sub for sub. That is 200 different people sub for sub with my channel. It caused a whole bunch of problems. Everybody in the pages is like, you not even watching my stuff. Y'all not even watching my stuff. It was a terrible experience because you got you you end up having 200 people that you're not going to be able to follow back and watch their stuff and it makes other people upset. Do not go sub for sub trying to start your YouTube channel off. Bad experience. If it's one thing I know, if you're properly promoting yourself, YouTube will give you subs organically. Should I have started off like saying tip one, two, or three? Yes. I don't know what tip I'm on, but I will say this. When I started off my channel, I didn't know what kind of content I wanted to do. I didn't know if I wanted to be a gamer. I wanted to play Call of Duty, Halo, 2K, Madden. I wanted to talk about sports. I wanted to be a reactor. I wanted to do skits. I didn't know what kind of content I was doing. 
and that was a very very big problem another thing i figured out with youtube is consistency is king hear me out let's say you have zero subscribers and you wanted to play madden for a month you wanted to do madden football content for a month and you gained 100 subscribers then you switch up and you wanted to do skits you want to be a funny guy you want to do skits for a month and you gained 100 subscribers from doing skits in your mind you think you gained 200 subscribers. No, Padre. Those 100 subscribers that watched you playing Madden does not care about your skits. And those 100 subscribers that care about your skits are not trying to find your Madden videos. So every time you change your content every month, just know that you always start back at zero. So if you gain 100 subs with Madden, 100 subs with 2K, 100 subs with making skits, and you got 300 subs, you do not have 300 subs. You have 100, 100, 100. So you'll be like, hey, I got a thousand subscribers. Why am I only getting 50 views? Maybe because you changed your content five times to get them thousand subscribers. So you already kept limiting yourself with your own fan base. Every time you change your content, you lose your subscribers. You have to stay consistent. Find your niche, stay consistent. This is for the small content creators. I'm sure the big content creators can do whatever they want. But for the small content creators, you have to find a niche, stay consistent, cater to your fans. I can't tell you how many times I've changed my content and one time I'm doing good and the next time I'm doing horrible. One video doing 800 views, the next video doing 20 views. And I'm like, what is going on? Why am I not getting no views? Because I keep changing my content. And you know when you're losing your subscribers. Them people that's in them comments when you play Madden, are not in them comments when you're doing your little skits or you're playing 2K. You know, like, man, what happened to Bob? Bob don't reply no more. Bob is gone. He mad you changed your content, dummy. I am too smart. I am too smart. This is going to be long, y'all. My bad. But y'all have to know my struggles. I'm here to struggle so that you don't. Let's get into the four T's. Title, topic, timing thumbnail the first t title i'm going to give you a good idea to have a great title you want to make sure your title sticks out it grasps the audience eyes you want to use words like expose destroy disrespect embarrass the best the greatest must watch you want to have your title your words pop out for the eyes to see i'll give you an example if you're playing a video game like call of duty you want to say this is the best assault rifle class in call of duty you can capitalize the best or the greatest assault rifle class. Or if you're doing a reaction, if you're doing a reaction to somebody like 50 Cent dissing Rick Ross, you want to use words like 50 Cent exposes Rick Ross. 50 Cent disrespects Rick Ross. You want to have your title pop out and people are like, oh, what did he say? What did 50 Cent say? You want to make sure you have your title pop out to the public. People of high rank in these video games always say, how a top 100 player plays such and such. They have these titles that pop out. Like, I want to know how a top 100 player of this video game plays. You have to have a great popping title. Don't have these titles that only you can understand. You got to make sure your titles pop out to everybody to understand. You can't be like Little Uzi Jerk back at it again. Who is Little Uzi Jerk? If I'm the person trying to type in Little Uzi Vert, I'm not typing in Little Uzi Jerk. That is your joke. That's a horrible title. It won't get no views. Damn. The second T, topic. A lot of small content creators want to talk about things that they love to talk about. And sometimes what you love to do, it's just trash. I'm sorry to say it. Maybe you are really good at knitting sweaters. Now, can you knit sweaters and get subscribers slowly? Sure, of course you can. But if you're trying to get to be at a level at a fast rate, talk about popular topics. It can be any popular topic. The popular games that's coming out, the newest games, trending movies. If it's a recent music beef happening between artists, talk about the most trending music. You gotta find out the popular topics, whether they're trending, whether it's video games, whether it's music, whether it's sports. Talk about popular topics and I promise you, you will get subscribers quickly. You gonna learn today. Do not talk about the 23 different flavors of Dr. Pepper and you think you're about to get 1,500 new subscribers the next month. The third T, timing. Timing is crucial on YouTube. Do not drop your videos at 11 o'clock at night thinking you're about to get any views. Who are you trying to have people watch it from people in China or something? Drop your videos at a reasonable time, whether that's 12 p.m., 2 p.m., 4 p.m., 6 p.m., 
7 p.m. Maybe the latest 8 p.m. Who knows? YouTube has a thing letting you know where you're getting your most views from. When you go into your YouTube studio and you check your analytics, it tells you exactly where the most views you get during these type of hours. You want to make sure you stay consistent and drop around those hours. It might say you get a lot of views between two o'clock and five o'clock. You make sure you drop between two and five. It said you don't do no views at eight in the morning. It said you don't do no views at eight at night. Then don't keep dropping views at eight in the morning or eight at night. Drop your videos at two to five. YouTube will tell you when your when your subscribers are watching your channel. It's been a lot of times where I finally get done with a video and it's 8:30 at night. And I'm like, man, I'm about to drop it. And then I'll drop it and I'll do 15 views and I feel bad I even dropped that. I should have waited the next day around 12 one or two o'clock to really drop in and see if my subscribers are around because you don't know all your subscribers might be at work all your subscribers might be doing it's a reason why they saying that your videos are doing good between two to five 12 to six seven to nine who knows drop your videos at a reasonable time that caters to your analytics and the fourth t is thumbnail and thumbnails can be a killer you want to make sure your thumbnails have some pop to it but you also don't want to spend a lot of time on your thumbnails that's going to lead me to my next tip the easier the better and what i mean by the easier the better is the less time you take making your thumbnails and the less time you take creating and editing your videos the less you will get uh, annoyed with youtube if you take two hours making your video and then you take an hour making your thumbnail. It took you three hours to get your video edited and your thumbnail put together and you post it on YouTube and you do 15, 20, 50 views. You like, oh my God, I wasted my whole day. And it's demoralizing. It makes you not want to make no more videos the next time. Get out of my head! Get out of my head! This is probably the one time where quality is not over quantity. Oh! I know what you think. You're like, oh man, the big YouTubers had these special effects in their videos. Everything's shaking, the screen's shaking, the lights are flaring, everything popping. I want my videos to look like that. They have editors. Most of these guys have editors to do it for them. We small content creators do not have editors. We need to make our life easier. Do not try so hard trying to make your video so special. The special effects, the, the screen pumps, the light flares. Just try to make a simple edited video that go for video games and reactors or whatever you talk about. Make a simple edited video. Doesn't take you an hour to, to get through with your edits. And make a simple, nice, easy thumbnail. That way you won't be demoralized if you don't get views. If you make a, a video that takes you three hours long to edit and you put it up and get 50 views, you're going to be done for the week. You don't want to do no more videos for the week. But if you do three videos, four videos in one day, it takes you an hour two hours, three hours, and you post each video one time a day, four or five days out the week, and you do 50 views here, 200 views there, 40 views there, you don't see yourself as being as upset when you put so much effort into one big video. You put so much effort in that one video and, and do low views, and then you're done for the whole week. But if you put a minimum amount of effort into your other videos and you just posting them every day consistently, you will guarantee get more views consistently posting those less edited videos than you will get trying to take three, four hours long to make one video. That's just too much time for videos. Even with my thumbnails, I have thumbnails that really pop that do like 600, 700 views. And then I have thumbnails like this that literally is just me grabbing the background, cropping myself, putting myself on top of the background, and then just adding the font. Adding a font that I already made, like this right here, this over here, the YouTube guide, small YouTube guide for small content creators. I already have these fonts saved. I can change the letters on the fonts. I can change the colors. The, this was pretty simple. I did this in like five minutes. I grabbed the background from YouTube. I grabbed this. I'm not YouTube. Google uh, the 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 space background. I said something like blue light background or best blue background. I typed in best blue background. I grab this background. I type in transparent 
100k views i type in transparent youtube logo i type in transparent uh freaking money over there and then i've just put this all together within like five minutes look, look, I, i'll show you i'm in infinity photo i don't know if it costs like 50 dollars. you could probably find free editors but this literally took me like five minutes this stuff moves this stuff this moves all over the place this is transparent that i got i went to google and i searched in transparent youtube logo i searched transparent views i searched transparent uh money dollars money right there here's my font uh right here i can change the color of the font if i wanted to i can make it yellow whatever even for this font i could change the color of the font it's just, i could change the type it's just i already had i already have the font already made so nothing changes anything i could do with this font, i already have the font already made it's just something simple i put together even when i do my thumbnails i have some thumbnails i may try a little effort on which takes me probably 20 25 minutes and I'll do 700 views, but I'm not I'm not tripping because it didn't take me long. And then I could do simple thumbnails where it's literally just the background, me above the background, and just put the font that I already have saved to my computer on top of things and change the colors around and maybe add a little highlights on myself. I do not, I, I make thumbnails effortlessly. Five, 10 minute thumbnails, and I edit my videos in like 30 minutes. It takes me like 40 minutes total to make my videos and it causes me to not be so upset when if I don't do views. If I do a lot of time making my, my videos, I'll get extremely upset. Make sure you do not waste so much time editing and making your thumbnails or you will get demoralized, you will get depressed. I'm teaching you stuff. You're gonna learn today. I'm not saying make your thumbnails absolutely crap. Make them pop a little bit, but save what you like. Save a background you like. Save a font that you like. Save the transparency. You can save the YouTube logo. You can save the 100K views. Save these things. That way, when you make your thumbnail, the next time you do it, it'll be fast. The first time you make a thumbnail, probably going to take you like an hour. Save everything you did that you, took you so long, and then the next thumbnail, use the same font, use the same uh, logo, use the whatever you got to use to make sure that you can make your fonts, your thumbnails easier to make. Save them. You have to make sure to chop up your videos, please. You're doing yourself a disservice if you put out a 10 minute video, a 30 minute video, an hour, two hour long podcast. You're doing yourself a disservice if you're not chopping up key points in your videos and using them as shorts or even smaller videos. Like if you were doing a podcast, you have a two hour long podcast, and in the podcast, you started talking about a key moment in that podcast, whether it was a funny moment or a popular topic, cut up that podcast and make a five minute, 10 minute video for the next for the next week. You can have the whole week being full of videos from your podcast. Make the podcast on Monday, have a video, a smaller clip of that video on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Keep taking clips out of your podcast. T keep taking clips out of your videos. Make shorts out of your videos. That way you can always have people trying to find out, oh, what, what is short? Oh, this short is doing numbers. If you do numbers on your short, I promise you, people will try to find the original video. Like, oh my God, that short was funny. Let me go click on his page and find out where that video was at. It happens to me all the time. When I get views on my shorts, from taking little clips out of my videos. For some reason, my videos start getting more views. Please, please clip up your videos, your podcasts, or your videos. If you have a 10 minute video, you should have like five shorts that you just chopping up and putting them on your freaking page. If you have a podcast, you should have five, 10 videos that you chopping up and making smaller videos, two minute videos, four minute videos. You see that Shannon Sharp does it. You see that the, the all the podcasters do it, the Joe Buttons, the freaking uh the Joe Rogans, they all chop up their videos and make smaller videos that had talked about key points in their podcast. If you are trying to do reaction videos, when you do reaction videos, you are looking at other people's content so you can get hit with that reuse content claim or copyright claims. You can get hit with that if you want to avoid getting hit with reuse content and copyright claims, this is what you do. As far as for music reactions, for me, I am not a big YouTuber like No Life Shack. No Life Shack says that he can watch full music videos and still get paid for that. That is not me. I get hit with copyright claims if I let a video play too long. 
I noticed that videos get copyrighted once you let it pass seven to 10 seconds. Between seven to 10 seconds is when you get copyright claims on music videos. It happens all the time. For me to avoid that, I pause the music every six seconds. So I let the, the artist rap probably like four bars is where the, the six second marks really lie. Beat your ass and hide the Bible if God watch you. Hiding it from the Lord, Drake. He hid he hiding it from the Lord. He said, God, look away. Don't worry about this. Don't just ignore this, God. God said, all right. They can rap four bars. Boom, 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 And I pause and then I do my dialogue. I pause and I let them know how I felt about those four bars. And every video I put out has no copyright claims. Every single music video I put out, I pause every six seconds. I get no copyright claims. I am getting monetized for all of my videos I put out. That is a nice trick you should know if you want to react. As a small content creator for music videos, you have to pause within that seven seconds. You will notice between eight to 10 seconds, YouTube will hit you with copyright claims. You will not get monetized. The person, the artist, the, the music video person will get monetized for what, for what you try to do by reacting. Now for the reactors that react to like other people's podcasts or other people's videos, what I like to do is I'll have a still figure. Let's say Joe Budden podcast. I'll have a still figure kind of like this for like, but it'll say Joe, it had like Joe Budden maybe image, a still frame, and you'll hear Joe Budden's voice, but you won't actually see the video. I'll have Joe Budden still figure frame on here, hearing what he got to say. Let's say he dissed Cardi B, and I let Joe Budden talk for 15 to 20 seconds, and then I'll pause, and then I'll give my analysis of what Joe Budden said, my dialogue. And that way you can avoid the reuse content when you're looking at somebody else's channel, talking about somebody else's channel. You'll be able to avoid the reuse content because if you keep getting reuse content, you won't be able to be partnered up with YouTube. But video gamers, this has nothing to do with you. You have nothing to worry about. It's just for people that want to talk about other guys' podcasts or they want to give their dialogue on somebody else's channel. Try to find bits and pieces to pause and give your dialogue, that way you won't get the reuse content claim. To be partnered up with YouTube for me, I had to get a thousand subs and 3000 watch hours. I don't know what the criteria is now, all this 500 subs, I have no idea what that is. For me, thousand subs, 3000 watch hours. But I was fortunate to get 4000 watch hours for one of my viral videos on my channel. And 4,000 watch hours unlocks ads that, that allows you to get money. Before I became a YouTube partner, I was under the impression that you get paid a penny per view. And that's a lie. On my end, at least. I thought that YouTube said you get a penny a view. And a penny a view, I was like, okay, cool. A penny a view means that if I do 100 views, that's $1. So if I do 1,000 views, that's $10. So if I do 10,000 views, that's $100. And you have to meet a hundred dollars is the criteria to have with YouTube for that month to get paid. If you don't hit a hundred dollars, you did not get paid for the month that you decided to do your content. But then I read video views. Video views are the amount of views your video gets. And the ad views are the amount of views your ads on your video gets. If your video has a million views, but you have no advertising on it, you won't be making any money. If your video has a million views, but only 10,000 ad views, You'll be making money only on the 10,000 ad views. Basically, YouTube does not care about the views you get. They only care about the ad views you get. So people clicking on your ads is where you make money. Whether they watch your ad for 5 seconds, 10 seconds, 30 seconds, that's how you get your money. I noticed one video had only 2,000 views and I made like $10. And another video had like 10,000 views and I made like $9. I'm like, what the heck is going on that this video is getting more revenue than the, the one that has more views. It does not matter about your view count, it matters about your ads. So that brings me back to the 3,000, 4,000 watch hour theory. The 3,000 watch hours means that I'm a partner with YouTube and I'm probably allowed to get money from my supporters. Like if I stream and I get super chats, they'll send me five, $10, $2, I'll be able to receive revenue from my supporters, but I will not receive revenue from my views until I get 4,000 watch hours which unlocks the ads. 4,000 watch hours for me was roughly 60 to 70,000 views. Ah! What? What? That's for the whole year. You have a whole year to get 4,000 watch hours. So between, when you if you start in October, your YouTube channel, you have until October to get 4,000 watch hours 
Watch hours does not count for shorts. Shorts are not included for watch hours. You only get watch hours from the videos you make. The videos you edit and upload, the 5, 10, 15 minute, 2 minute, whatever videos you make, those are your watch hours. You do not get watch hours from shorts. Now, I forgot this process, the Google AdSense process. You have to have a Google AdSense account connected to your YouTube to when you finally get money, when you finally get paid through YouTube, you have to make $100 in the previous month for you to get paid next month. You have to make $100 in August to get paid in September. You have to make at least $100 in September to get paid in October. For me, $100 for me, how many views was that? It, it was about 20 to 30,000 views for me to get $100. So for that one month, I had to do at least 20 to 25, 30,000 views to make $100. I have no idea if that's for everybody else. I'm just telling you my journey. You need to have a Google AdSense account connected to your YouTube. Google AdSense is something through Google where if you make your hundred dollars on YouTube, that's great and all, but it has to transfer to your Google AdSense account. So Google AdSense, they'll, they'll have you a whole setup where you got to connect your Google AdSense to your YouTube, and then you'll be able to transfer your money through YouTube, your Google AdSense account, and you go through this whole process. You have to link your YouTube account to the Google AdSense account. If you don't link your accounts together, which I'm pretty sure YouTube does the whole tutorial process when you're making your account or whatever to link your Google AdSense to your YouTube. And if you don't know it's linked, you should see the identification number on your YouTube studio. And then that same identification number will be on your Google AdSense. And that's how you know you're linked to the same account. You gotta confirm your identity on Google AdSense. That's a whole process in itself where you're confirming your identity and then that takes like one or two days or whatever for them to say, oh yeah, that's you. Sending your identification, sending your ID. Then you gotta confirm your address. Once you type in where you live, take like seven days for them to send you something in the mail. So don't be scared. Like where my where my mail at? Where my mail at? Set about seven days. It'll Google AdSense. See how I look? I don't know if y'all can see that. Google AdSense will send you this in the mail. They'll send you a pin number. I don't know if I should show you the pin number. They'll send you a pin number. And you gotta type in that pin number in Google AdSense to confirm your address. Once you confirm your address, you gotta do your W-2s, put your W-2s in, and then you'll notice that, oh, I probably activated my account for real this time. Cause on YouTube, it'll say you made a hundred dollars. But on Google AdSense, it say you made zero. After you did all your confirmations, your ID, your W-2, your Google, your, your address you'll notice that YouTube will send the money over to your Google AdSense account. It doesn't, it's not right away. It takes about the middle of the month. So let's say you made $100 in August and then YouTube said you made $100. On September, you won't know, it won't transfer over to the Google AdSense to like September 14th, 15th or 16th, in the middle of September. So don't be scared like, oh my God, I got money on YouTube, but it's not transferred over to my Google AdSense account. It transferred over in the middle of the month, the next month, about a week before you get paid. I made $100 in August. Google AdSense shows I made $100 September 15th, and then I'll get paid September 21st or through 25th. So don't get too flustered if you don't see your money going immediately to your Google AdSense account. And you also have to confirm your bank you got to confirm a bank and then Google ads is sending like a dollar to your bank and you got to let them know you got the dollar, probably another pin number, probably another pin code you got to put in. So it's a lot of tedious processing after you finally become a partner and setting up your payments. If y'all wondering why it took me so long to get monetized and be a partner with YouTube because I'm almost at 10,000 subs and I just got my first paycheck. This is the painful journey I had went through. When I was starting off my journey, I was reacting to reuse content. I was reacting to people's interviews. I was reacting to people's podcasts. And every time I did it, I didn't get a copyright claim. I didn't get copyright claims for reacting to people's uh, interviews or podcasts. So I thought I was doing everything right. I'm like, hey, I don't have no copyright claims. So I must be doing everything within the guidelines of YouTube until I try to get monetized, until I try to apply for a YouTube partnership. So when I applied for the YouTube partnership at around 3,000 subs, they hit me with the reuse content claim. What? What the f They told me my channel wasn't able to get monetized and I can reapply next month. And I was like, there's no way. Everything had no copyright claims. 
Then I did think about it. I did have two videos like eight, nine months ago that did have copyright claims on it. But I'm like, I couldn't think that far back, so I deleted them. So I had to wait a month after I deleted those videos. And fortunately, but unfortunately, I went viral. Talking about Cat Williams got me so viral. I mean, I made about 15 and like 20 shorts about Cat Williams. I was hitting 10K, 20K, 20K, 100K, 160K. Talking about Cat Williams, that's another tip. Capitalize on your viral moments. If something goes viral, do not do one video of that viral moment. If you get something viral and your video does 10,000, 5,000, 1,000 views, talk about it again. Find a way to talk about it 5, 10, 5, 10 15 times and keep on racking up the numbers. Cat Williams, I was, it was amazing. You need to capitalize off your viral moments. It, it could be a viral movie, a viral video game, a viral interview, a viral tragedy, a viral about politics, something about Trump, whatever it is. If there's something viral that, that's in your frame of talking about it, please talk about it and do not do it one time. Do it plenty of times. Capitalize off the viral moments. How the fuck you know this? So I went viral. I had no copyright claims. I reapplied to YouTube partnership and I hit me with another reused content claim. What more do you want from me? YouTube does not tell you the video that you have to delete to get partnered up. You just gotta be lost and just assume that, oh my God, which video is it? Cause I have no copyright claims. I had no copyright claims and all I could read is the guidelines saying that some videos may not have enough dialogue in them. If you have a video or a short that does not have a lot of dialogue in it, They'll say it's reused content. So I had to start thinking like, uh, maybe I'm not talking so much in these videos. I should probably delete this. I'm not talking that much in this short. I had to start cleaning up shop without knowing if I'm doing the right thing or not. And I went viral again. Kendrick Lamar and the Drake beef. I started going viral with the Kendrick Lamar and Drake beef. And I didn't do one. I didn't do two. I did video after video after video. I was getting 20K, 15K, 10K, 8K. I did video after video and then I got my most viral video. I reacted to this Drake video and got 140,000 subs. Remind you, I'm still under the reuse content claim. I had to wait three months this time. The first time I got it was one month. The second time I got it, I had to wait three months before I could reapply to YouTube. I was so scared to get hit with another reuse content claim. I deleted all my viral videos. Yes, I deleted everything. <laughs> I had over 300 videos on my channel and I cleaned out my whole channel and started from scratch only having one video on my channel, which was the 140K view Drake video. Long journey, painful journey. Put in my claim in July, I finally got approved off of having one video on my channel. Finally! When I got approved, YouTube immediately monetized my channel. You started seeing dollar signs on my videos, which wasn't there before I got approved. It was a breath of fresh air. After that, I started re-uploading the music reactions that I took down between the Drake and the Kendrick beef, and I started re-getting my love back from my supporters who are still here now, who I really appreciate, thank you. And it, and it was all worth it. Everything I made in August while being a partner, I got paid for September. So all the views I got, all the money I accumulated in August, it got me paid in September. Remind you, I had to make over $100 and I made $188 in august to get paid september 21st i will say this i did not know i was going to be a music reactor my supporters kind of found my niche for me i knew i was kind of funny i could react to things but i got my most viral clips reacting to music and it was like okay i should start doing this and as i became more consistent reacting to music the views has been consistent i started seeing a lot more love of doing what i was doing so my ending thoughts are is please find your niche but also make sure your niche supports your fans Make it like a popular niche. Do not be like, oh my God, I'm really good at Mario Nintendo 64 and think you about to get views playing that game. Can people get views playing that game? I'm pretty sure they can. The bigger names. You should not start off like that. Work your way down to that once you get your name up there. Play popular video games. Talk about popular topics. I am not the smartest person in the world. I am not the best gamer. I do not have the most knowledge on music or the most knowledge on freaking movies. I found my niche being funny, reacting to something that I love doing. I know lyrics. I can understand lyrics very well. And it kind of fell in my lap on what niche I really should be going for. And it was reacting to music. Could I have did a different lane reacting to sports or reacting to movies or doing skits? Of course, I probably think I could have did them lanes and I could have excelled in them lanes as well. 
but it just so happened that music reactions fell in my lap first and it was like okay this is what i should do i use comedy to carry my videos for you that might not be for you you might use knowledge to carry your videos you might be way more well spoken than me to carry your videos. You may be a, a great gamer and have a whole, and have a you know average personality. One of them gamers that be sitting there killing everybody, but they don't know how to laugh. <laughs> I feel targeted. Find your niche. Be consistent. Please be consistent. Do not make it difficult for yourself. The more videos you drop, the more likely a video will go viral. If you drop in one video to two videos a week. Do not be like, oh my God, I'm not getting no views with YouTube. I don't know. I do not know what videos are going viral. The videos I think that are good videos be like 100 views. The videos that I think that's not that good, 5,000, 10,000. I'm like, oh my God, I never know. You will never know what video is the one that's going to go viral. I made countless videos that I thought was really good videos that I didn't get no traction from. And the videos I felt like I should not post, end up getting a lot of traction and you don't you just never know so please stay consistent drop a lot of videos you never know when that one viral moment can change your life i had plenty of viral moments and right now as we speak my life feel like it's changing for the better i really want you guys to make it i told you everything every struggle i went through all the pain all all the pain all the agony i want you to know that whatever you've been through i already been through it I have no social medias to share my videos. So if I can get to 10,000 subs, I know you guys can get to 10,000 subs. Go follow every step. I know it was a long video. I bet you, I'm gonna put timestamps in here. I'll put timestamps in here. I bet you you'll find a moment that I've been through that, you, that you're going through right now. If you're going through a moment right now, you're gonna find a timestamp that I've been through it and I'm gonna talk you out of it. I'm gonna make sure that you don't get demoralized or you get depressed. We, we got it. We got it together, y'all. I'm just rambling right now, but we got it. I'm telling you, I did not know I was going to be to this point, and I'm at a solid point that I feel happy where it's, where it's going. If I can get there, I promise you, all y'all, everybody, I'm dumber than a mother... <laughs> <laughs> I was meant to struggle so that you don't have to, and if you do struggle, at least you know exactly what to do. Fun. <laughs> make sure you like comment share subscribe to my channel make sure you like comment share and subscribe to my team the can't be serious podcast can't be serious podcast that's my team over there talk about sports wrestling hip-hop entertainment all type of things going on with the world subscribe to them subscribe to me and i'm out